A while back, I did a stream where I made a tier list ranking all the Pizza Tower levels, but I was a little stuttery and unclear on why I ranked each level the way I did, and I felt like it didn't really reflect the way I felt about every level in Pizza Tower. So today, I wanted to do a definitive version of the tier list where I go back through every level in the game and rank them all. And I don't really have a set criteria for ranking each level. I don't have my grading rubric out like, ooh, you get an S for level design, a, a B for music, and an F for theming. I'm just gonna be talking about things that I really liked about each level and things I didn't like, and then rank them from P to D. But I'm just gonna go ahead and throw out ranked D and C because, let's be honest, there's not a bad level in Pizza Tower. Every level in Pizza Tower is fun to play, so the lowest tier is gonna start at B rank. And I divided all the levels up by floor, and I'll be ranking each boss at the end of their floor. So we'll get started with the first level in the game, the tutorial. This level does a great job introducing you to everything that Pizza Tower is about. You're thrown directly into this weird pizza realm, you got the intentionally shitty tutorial art, and you've even got the pizza pasta song. It really does a great job setting the tone of the game and lets you know you're in for something special. It also does a great job teaching you a lot of Pizza Tower's movement tech like mock running and super jumping, but it also intentionally leaves a lot of the mechanics out of the tutorial so the player's not overwhelmed and still has room to learn as they go. I'd say my only issue I have with the tutorial is that it's required to play through every time you start a new game. There's no way to skip it, so every time you speedrun or start a new playthrough, you have to do it. But the game does at least encourage you to get good at the tutorial, since it'll unlock lap too early if you finish it in less than a minute and 45 seconds. But overall, I have no big complaints about the tutorial. I just wish it was skippable, but it still does a great job teaching you everything you need to know. So I'm gonna put it in S tier. Next up is John Gutter. This is the level most players will immediately hop straight into after the tutorial, and it does a fantastic job of reinforcing everything you just learned there. You're forced to slam into these metal blocks, you gotta slide to fit through tight spaces, and you have to super jump to go up this vertical section. It makes sure the player doesn't forget their moves by forcing you to use them to progress. It also sprinkles in a couple new elements on top of that, like fork knights and these stupid monkeys that drop banana peels. And I really like that about John Gutter. It's a great after tutorial experience where it reinforces everything you just learned while also throwing some new stuff in on top of that. I do have one issue with John Gutter, and it's that it's kind of, I don't know, bland? The theming is just like a gutter filled with pillar johns, and there's nothing particularly visually interesting to look at in this level. I wish it had a bit more of an interesting theme, especially coming off the last level, which was a bit more wacky. But even with that minor complaint, I still really enjoy John Gutter. It's a great intro level that makes sure the player really knows how to play the game, so I'm gonna put it in S tier. <laughs> And that brings us to Pizzascape. This is the level you show someone if you want to introduce them to Pizza Tower. It's one of my favorites for a ton of reasons. First up, you've got the main gimmick in this level, the Night Form. It's a really fun introduction to transformations, and it feels great to control when you're sliding around all over the place. I especially love the sections where you can chain together your slides. It's pretty simple to do, but it always feels really satisfying for some reason. Another thing I really like about Pizzascape is how it's laid out. And this is kind of hard to describe, but the whole level just flows really well together. The rooms have this perfect mix of platforming sections and speed sections where you can really get moving. And it just feels great to play every time. And then on top of that, there's the best part of this level, the music. It starts off with hot spaghetti, which slaps on its own, but then it swaps to cold spaghetti halfway through, and this level gets so much better, especially when you get to the- what? This level is just so much fun and I don't think there's anything I'd change about it. The transformation is just super fun to play with, all the rooms are perfectly laid out, and I feel like I could play it over and over for hours and be happy. So I'm putting Pizzascape up at the top in P tier. Next we've got Ancient Cheese. This one's sadly one of my least favorites, and even if it is one of the first levels in the game, I still struggle to remember much about it. It's just not a very interesting level. Like, one of the main mechanics is these cheese blocks that when you step on them, they break. It's kind of lame and not really interesting. You just have to run fast, which is what you do 90% of the time in Pizza Tower. It also introduces bombs, which really slow the game down. There's all these sections where you have to slowly walk the bomb to something that you have to blow up, and it feels really out of place in a game that's all about speed. Also, the whole theme of the level is kind of forgettable too. It's just cheese in ancient Greece or something. Also, why isn't the level just called ancient Greece? I mean, the pun's right there. Anyway, whatever. Ancient Cheese is just one of those few levels that never really clicked with me. 
The mechanics don't really add a lot to the level and it's just not very interesting. So I'm gonna put it down in B tier. After that, we got Blood Sauce Dungeon. This was the level where things kind of clicked with me and I realized this game's really good. It's a level that's heavily built around drifting every chance you can get, so almost every surface ends with a drop off and you're constantly swerving left and right to maintain your speed as you go all the way down to the bottom, and it all just feels great to play. The escape in particular also feels amazing and perfectly laid out for you to get into this flow state where you're constantly making split second decisions as you climb your way out of there. It was just a really memorable section and it made me fall in love with Pizza Tower. But I did have a minor gripe with this level, and that was the achievements. Particularly the one where you have to beat the level without ever touching the lava. I remember having to repeat one specific section a bunch because there's this single anchovy that's behind this block, and if you're not going fast enough, you're pretty much guaranteed to get hit and fall right into the lava. And this was probably just a skill issue, but it's just a personal gripe I had with the level when I was doing the achievements. But that's really my only issue with Blood Sauce Dungeon. Besides that, it's overall really fun and has one of the most well laid out escape sequences in the whole game. So I'm going to put it in S tier. But after that, we've got the first boss on this list, Pepperman. I'll start by saying that I think all the bosses in Pizza Tower are great, but this is probably the least interesting one. Pepperman's design and the boss music are fantastic, but the fight itself is kind of meh. All he does is run at you and bounce around, and it's probably just because it's the introduction to Pizza Tower's boss fights, but I never really found it all that interesting. The most interesting part of the fight for me was where you have to carve a statue to stun him, but really all that is is just mashing the dash button before he gets to you. I do really like the part at the end though, where Pepperman turns into this little guy that you have to chase after. I always thought it was really fun having to scramble after him in order to end the fight. But I want to put this in A tier. It's memorable because it's the first boss in the game, but it's really not the most interesting fight mechanic wise. And after that, now we're on to Floor 2, and first up we've got Oregano Desert. This one comes out of nowhere with some of the biggest variety in any level in the game. It just casually introduces a bunch of unique mechanics you only see in this level. You've got pizza marts, you've got cows, the rain dancing cheeses, the little guy who throws hot chicken at you, and the fire mouth transformation that comes with that. There's just tons of new stuff in this level that only shows up here. And also the music in this level is one of my favorite tracks in the game. It fits so well and makes zooming through it feel so much cooler. Also, I forgot to mention, there's a whole UFO section just slapped in the middle of this level. There's just so much variety in Oregano Desert, it's insane, and it makes this level another one of those that I could play for hours. It definitely deserves its spot at the top in P tier. Then after that we got Waste Yard. This is another really unique level with some great theming. It's all spooky and graveyard-like. You're surfing on corpses, you can die and become a ghost, and there's even a ghost John that chases you during the escape. And it's just a really unique level and has a lot of fun playing with this zombie graveyard theme. I have seen some people though complain that the ghost controls are a little awkward, but I usually just swap to the D-pad to control the ghost. And I think as of the latest patch, there was actually a change that fixed the controls for the ghost, so it should feel a lot better now. I do have to dock this level a little bit though, because it's one of the only levels that puts a secret right before a point of no return. When I was 100%ing the game, I had to play the level like three times through because I kept missing the hidden door, and once you go past this wooden plank, there's no way to get back down, so I just had to restart the level every time. It was really annoying and frustrating, but other than that, I think it's still a great level, so I'm putting it up in S tier. After that, we got Fun Farm, the funny Mort level. I love the theming on this one. The whole farm setting, the hillbilly vegetable enemies like the eggplant and the potato, all these hay bales and cows, and this chill whistling music on top of all that. It's just a very fun farm level. But hey, wait a second. The main attraction of this level is definitely the Mort transformation. He ratatouilles you and lets you swing around on these hooks. And there's just something that feels really good about this transformation. The controls feel perfect and the little fwing it makes when you swing is really satisfying. It's one of my favorite transformations 
in the game, and it makes the level a whole lot more memorable. Also, it's Mort the Chicken. It's just such a random thing to reference, but it fits perfectly in Pizza Tower for some reason. And I'm really struggling to think of anything I don't like about Fun Farm. It's just got a great theme, and the Mort transformation is just really goofy and a lot of fun to play with. So I'm going to put it up in P tier. Next up is Fast Food Saloon, another fun level with a western saloon theme. You have all these beer bottles everywhere with these gunslinging sock enemies, I don't know what these guys are. But this is another great level, mainly because of the music. It's catchy as hell and it even has those Hideki Naganuma style samples that you hear in like Jet Set Radio. I also really like the mini races you have to do against the horses to get toppins. They're like these tiny time trials that encourage you to go as fast as you can through parts of the level. Though it is a little bit frustrating when you lose these races because you can't retry them. You're locked out of that toppin for your current run and you have to restart the whole level for another shot, which kind of sucks. Then there's the sausages too. I wasn't really a huge fan of these combined with the timers. The sausages just felt like a more slippery pepino and some of the timers were frustratingly tight and made you walk all the way back to reset them if you failed. But these are some pretty minor gripes that are circumvented if you just get good. I still think this level is really fun to play through so I'm gonna put it in S tier. And then lastly on floor two, we've got the vigilante fight. This boss is great. It was such a cool surprise to get handed a gun and just start blasting away. And the gun controls feel great too. I really like that you can either mash to shoot or hold the button for like a mega bullet. But the fight itself has so much going on in it and it's really chaotic, especially in the second phase when everything goes dark and you have the cows bouncing around in between all the vigilantes different attacks. It's just a lot more intense than the previous boss fight and I love it for that. I also love the standoff you have at the end of the fight, and I'm still not over the fact that I somehow failed it on my first playthrough. Did they need to- Wait, they said draw, I thought it was gonna say 3, 2, 1, I, I wasn't reading. I was looking at him. <laughs> but Vigilante has so much more going on than Pepperman, and it's a nice surprise on your first playthrough, so I'm gonna put it up in S tier. Now we're on to floor 3. First up here is Crust Cove. This one rules. It's got this whole goblin pirate thing going on in this tropical setting, the music's a total bop, and it even has the little pineapple dudes that taunt you when you taunt at them. It's just all around a, a really fun level, and I always look forward to playing it. But my only issue with this level is its main gimmick, the barrel transformation. It's a little weird. It kind of feels like it's on autopilot sometimes, where you're just letting Pepino roll around without much input. But it at least looks silly, especially in this room near the end where you're just kind of bouncing around the room as you dodge all these cannonballs. It's a lot of fun to watch, but it's not all that engaging to play since you're just holding the sprint button and that's it. I feel like the barrel transformation could have had some other extra element to it to make it more fun to use. But that's really my only complaint about Crust Cove. I still think this level's great, so I'm gonna put it up in S tier. Next up we've got Gnome Forest, oh boy. This one's probably my least favorite level for a lot of reasons, but let me get the positives out of the way. Obviously, it's your first time you get to play as Gustavo, and this was a big surprise moment that made this level really special. He controls so well, and honestly, I wish you could play the whole game as him. I also like these pizza wizards that you have to deliver to their homes. They're kind of like the horses from Fast Food Saloon, where they encourage you to go as fast as you can, which is where Pizza Tower really shines. But now the things I didn't like about this level. This level is so long, and playing it over and over was so tiring when going for P-Ranks. Especially the fact that it forces you to do Gustavo's tutorial every single time you do the level. I already know how to play as Gustavo, why do I have to do a tutorial again and again? I wish you just had the option to walk past the tutorial and continue the level, because having to do it every time really slows this level down. This level is also by far the hardest to P-Rank for me, or at least it was until they patched it recently. There's so many annoying enemies like the pizzards and the teleporting pickles that I still don't know how to properly deal with. And there's also a few rooms where there's so much space between the enemies or the collectibles and if you don't play it perfectly, you're guaranteed to lose your combo. Especially this one room with just this one single topping in it. I feel like I messed up my P rank because of this room so many times. I do think they patched this room recently to be less of a problem, but I still have really bad memories of this level. So overall, I think it's really cool that you get to play as Gustavo here, but doing this level over and over for a P rank really made me dislike Gnome Forest, so I'm putting it in B tier.
Next up is golf. This level is genius. The one thing I didn't expect in a funny pizza platforming game was a damn mini golf level, but here it is and it works so well. You'd think the golfing would like kill the pacing, but the golf mechanics are really simple to use and don't really get in the way, especially if you're going fast and can just push the ball as you sprint through. But this level is just full of charm. The fact the ball is this little grease ball guy that walks around, all the different mini golf courses, and all the different ranks you get based on your golf score. Nice, nachos. Oh no. I also can't believe they put microwave noises in the music and it just works for some reason. But overall, golf is one of my favorite levels. It's just so unique and I've got nothing bad to say about it. So I'm throwing it up in Primo Berg tier. Now on to Deep Dish 9, another good ass level. One of the things I really like about it is the mechanics. It's got the weird olive bubble things that make you float and bounce off of stuff, and it introduces portals too that teleport you back and forth. Both of which are really cool mechanics, but the rocket transformation I feel like is where this level really shines. It's so frantic and fast, and it feels great to use in those sections where you have to drift back and forth with it. I also love all the location hopping you do in this level as you bounce around from planet to planet, and I especially love the little transition scenes where you get into the rockets. They're a nice surprise your first time through, and they always make me laugh. Lastly, I gotta talk about the music, and I'm not sure if this is intentional or accidental, but every time I play the level, the music shifts from the guitar to the horns right when you get out of the first rocket, and it feels perfectly timed every time. I don't know if Pizza Tower's soundtrack is dynamic, or if the music is spaced out perfectly to where this hits just right if you're going fast. Either way, I love the way the music transitions throughout Deep Dish 9. But this is another level where I struggle to think of anything I disliked about it. It's always really fun to play and has a ton of variety to it. So it's another one of my favorites and it's going up in P tier. And that brings us to the floor three boss, The Noise. I love this goofy little guy and I really wish you got to see more of him. Unfortunately, I didn't really think the boss fight was all that interesting. Most of Noise's moves just involve him jumping or skateboarding at you, which wasn't all that interesting. I did really like that his attacks are all randomized though. He doesn't have a set attack pattern like the other bosses, so you're always worried about what he's going to do next. I also like that his second phase adds an additional layer to all of his attacks. He'll now drop a fake noise after the hot air balloon attack. He now jumps after the pogo stick attack and slams the ground, and he'll kick the skateboard at you after he's done riding around on it. It's a nice mix up in this fight that keeps things a little bit more fresh. Overall though, I think this fight's neat, but I never really found it all that interesting. I do think it does a great job introducing you to the noise as a character though, but the fight itself is kind of eh, so I'm putting it in A tier. Now onto floor 4, and we're starting with Pig City. This is another one I really enjoy. I love the idea that there's this entire massive city within the pizza tower, and I love all the pig people just going about their day as Pepino zooms on by. I also really like how this level tells a little story with the taxis in it. At first you're just riding like normal, then on the third one you get arrested for some reason and Gustavo has to free you from jail, and then after you're out of jail, Pizza Face shows up so you gotta get out of there as quick as you can. And admittedly, it's a pretty simple story, but it's one of the few levels that feels like it has this overarching narrative to it, and I really like that. But onto the gameplay side of things. All the mechanics in this level are a ton of fun to play with. You've got the rat balloons that let you float around, the grind rails straight out of like Sonic Advance, and the pig police that arrest you and prevent you from moving. And all these mechanics are fun on their own, but my favorite part of this level is how each of these mechanics is recontextualized when you're playing as Gustavo. The grind rails become monkey bars you can shimmy across, the rat balloon inflates brick and lets you do a high jump, and the pig police now arrest brick and leave Gustavo on his own until he can free him. These mechanics didn't have to work differently between Pepino and Gustavo, but it's really cool that the extra effort was put in to make them function differently depending on who you're playing as. Overall though, Pig City is just another level I really look forward to playing on every playthrough. It's got so much mechanical variety, and I can't think of anything I don't like about it. So I'm putting it up in P tier. Now onto Peppybot Factory. This is one that I've seen a lot of people complain about before, but I don't really get the hate on this level. It's not one of my favorites, but I wouldn't say it's bad by any means. My favorite part about it was definitely the pizza box transformation though. It's one of the best feeling transformations in the game. I love the little flutter jump you get with it, and it feels really good to chain the spin move between enemies. But the other mechanics in this level aren't really all that fun. The two main ones that come to mind are the conveyor belts and the little grabby hands that move you when you touch them. 
Some of the conveyor belt sections are fun, but I remember the later ones were sometimes frustrating because they'd be covered in electricity or boost pads. I specifically remember losing my P-Rank to that stupid conveyor belt at the end several times, and that kind of soured my enjoyment of this level. As for the little grabby hands, I don't feel like they add a whole lot to this level. The coolest thing you do with them is throw a bomb into one and it moves the bomb up. Like, wow, so neat. These things only really caused me to get annoyed because I'd either accidentally jump into one or run into one without enough speed to break the block afterward. They just feel a little awkward to use and I don't really like them. So I'm gonna put Peppybot Factory in A tier. I don't think it's an awful level like some do, but I never really find myself looking forward to playing it. Next up is Oh Shit, which has got to be the best name for a level in this game. Unfortunately, I think that's the only thing I really like about this level. This one's just kind of strange because it's filled with tons of obstacles that take control away from you. Like all these pipes you go through, the banana peels that are littered everywhere, and the big cheese balls. All these obstacles just kind of force you to sit there and wait for the animations to end, and they never really felt all that fun to me. As for mechanics in this level, you first got Mr. Pinch, who grabs you and flings you upward. It's a mechanic where every time I see one, I get nervous because it never really felt like I was fully in control when getting grabbed by him. And there's a couple rooms where if you do get grabbed by him, you just have to redo the entire room, which was really annoying. Then there's the sticky cheese transformation, and I bet you could do a poll and ask every Pizza Tower player what their favorite transformation was, and not a single person would vote for this one. All it gives you is the ability to jump up walls, an ability Pepino already has a better version of. It also moves super slow, so it's really not that fun to use. You just mash jump until you get to a priest so you can start having fun again. But this is definitely one of my least favorite levels, especially after P-ranking it. It's one of the longest levels in the game, so any mistake felt awful because you had to redo the entire 8 minute level again. And it made me really not like, oh shit. It feels like it keeps going on forever, and there's a lot of sections where you're just waiting around until you can control Pepino again. I don't know, I, I just didn't really like it, so I'm gonna put this down at the bottom in B tier. Alright, now on to Refrigerator, Refrigerador, Freezerator. This one's a nice cozy snow level and I love it. I really like how a lot of the rooms are filled with this unbreakable ice and you have to turn on the heat to melt it. It really makes the level feel way bigger because the rooms look totally different after the ice is gone. And that was just a subtle detail I really liked about this level. It really makes the level feel a lot bigger than it actually is. I also love the goofy Santa enemy with his silly little laugh, but I absolutely hate the enemies he drops. These snowmen suck. They're literally just fork knights, but because they're made of soulless snow, they know no fear and won't get scared when you're moving in Mach 2. They can be a little frustrating to deal with sometimes, but all that doesn't really matter when you reach the best part of this level. The part where you get Satan's butthole or, or whatever and turn into this spicy whirling death ball. You're unstoppable and it feels like a totally different game as you're flying around destroying everything in your path. And then the music kicks in when you pick it up. It's probably one of my favorite tracks in the game. I just wish it played for the rest of the level because it goes away after like 40 seconds after you hit John and the escape music takes over. But regardless, this moment makes this level really stand out, and it's one of the more unique escape sequences. It's such a cool moment, and it made this one of my favorite levels in the game. So I'm putting Refrigerator, Refrigerador, Freezerator up at the top in P tier. Now for the boss of Floor 4, Fake Pepino. This one's the most memorable boss for me. It comes out of nowhere and confuses the hell out of you when you first see that versus screen. And then it throws you into the ring with this weird clone of Pepino. And I love that his attacks get more and more messed up as you go through the phases. Like, it just starts with him running at you, and then he starts filling the room with clones of himself, and then he takes his own head off and throws it at you like a little freak. All of his attacks escalate and get weirder and weirder as the fight goes, and I really like that. And then you get the final phase where you fall through the floor and Fake Pepino's true form gets revealed, and it's such a terrifying surprise. I feel like everyone I've seen react to this screams at this part. And then it's immediately followed up by this tense as hell chase sequence where you narrowly avoid death. Well, at least it would be tense if the fight didn't get nerfed to the point where this phase isn't even threatening anymore. Like, when I played this fight for the first time, it was after the fight was patched, and I never even saw Fake Pepino after starting that phase. I wish I'd gotten to play the original version of this fight because it looked way more tense. So I would put this in P tier, but I feel like that nerf to the final phase was a little too harsh, and it kind of kills the tension of that final phase. But overall, this fight is still such a fun surprise, and one of my favorite bosses in the game. So I'm putting it in S tier.
And now we're at the final floor, and I'll start off with Pizza Scare on this one. Every time I get to this level, I go, oh yeah, Pizza Scare, I, I forgot about this one. It's just a strange level to me. It feels like it doesn't really fit in the game, like it's almost left over, which I guess makes some sense since it was a level from an older build of Pizza Tower that was meant to be like a harder, scarier version of Pizza Scape. But it feels out of place in the final game because it's the only level that feels like it's reusing stuff from another level. And there's also nothing that really sticks out to me when thinking about things I like in Pizza Scare. I guess the level's fun to play at least, but there's nothing really remarkable that stands out to me. The new mechanics are kind of meh. You have the Exorcist that's just a reskinned priest, but instead of removing power-ups, the Exorcist gives you the ability to kill the ghost enemies in this level. I feel like this mechanic doesn't really add a lot to this level, and only really gives you the ability to kill enemies like you normally can. And it's really frustrating when you run out of your ghost killing juice and you have to run all the way back to the Exorcist to try again. And then there's the Ghost King mechanic, and this is another strange one. It activates things that you could just normally interact with on your own. It feels almost like padding when you have to free the ghost just so you can activate another part of the level. It's just not really a satisfying mechanic, and I feel like Pizza Scare wouldn't really change all that much if you remove the King Ghost from the level. So overall, Pizza Scare is just kind of strange, and I never really find myself excited to play it. It's not very memorable, the mechanics aren't very interesting, and it's the only level that feels like it could be removed and not much would be lost. So I'm going to put it at the bottom in B tier. Now on to Don't Make a Sound, the funny FNAF level, hee <laughs> hee. Jokes aside, I love all the FNAF references in this level. The animatronics chasing you around, the jump scares when you get caught, and the fact they stuff you into a little Pepino puppet. It's all great, and it makes this level feel really unique. The first half of it almost feels like a stealth level where you have to sneak around all the alarm bots trying not to wake up any of the animatronics. And I also love that moment of panic when you screw up and an alarm bot's timer starts going down so you have to scramble to get to them in time. It makes for some fun clutch moments where you barely get to an alarm bot before it's about to activate. I also really love how this level flips itself on its head in the second half when you get the gun and you become the jump scare. It felt great blasting my way through all the animatronics that had given me so much trouble in the first half. I think my only gripe with this level came from P-ranking it though. It was really frustrating if you got jump scared by an animatronic because it immediately ended your combo. It, this felt a little weird because normally when you fall or have to respawn, you have a couple seconds to try to keep your combo going. But for some reason, the animatronics instantly end your combo, which always felt a little strange to me and made P-ranking this level even more of a struggle. But overall, I do really enjoy Don't Make a Sound, but I feel like P-ranking it kind of hurt my enjoyment a little bit, so I'm going to put it in S tier. Next up is War. And many people have said this before, but I love that they waited till the end of the game to let you play the best level. This level instantly gets your adrenaline pumping the second you pick up that shotgun and the Hotline Miami ass music kicks in, and then you notice the timer fade in as well, and you immediately know you gotta go, dude. This level is just such a fun surprise. I think my favorite part of it was definitely the fact that you're on this timer. It's initially pretty scary to know you have a limited time to finish the level, but it causes you to panic and start making bad decisions to save time. It just puts you into this frantic state that's really fun. And you eventually realize it's not that bad once you start breaking the boxes to get time back, but I still remember that initial panic I had when I saw the timer pop up for the first time. I also love that all the secrets and top-ins in this level are put right in front of you. You don't have to waste any time searching for them and can purely focus on going as fast as you possibly can. But this level is always such a fun time. I love how fast it feels. I love the shotgun mechanics, and I feel like I could play this level over and over forever. It's earned its place at the top in P tier. And now onto one of my favorite final boss fights of all time, Pizza Face. The first phase isn't all that special since it's kind of simple and all you have to do is dodge Pizza Face and the enemies he throws out, but this simplicity makes the second phase such a huge shock when Pizza Head shows up and the fight devolves into this chaotic mess with the goofy music and all this crap all over the screen. I just love how much of a sensory overload this part of the fight is. And then on top of all that, you got the third phase after with the guitar that comes in like... <laughs> 
This part was so cool. Pizza Head brings back every boss in the game and you have to do a little mini boss rush where you fight all of them back to back. And it's not anything crazy like a Hollow Knight Pantheon. It's meant to be these like abridged versions of each boss since Pepino's so pissed off that he just destroys all of them. And then it ends with a 1v1 against Pizza Head where you pile drive him into the tower to end it. Ugh. It's such a fun fight and it's just perfect and trying to P-rank it for a couple hours made me love it even more. So I'm putting it at the top in P tier. And then there's the finale level right after this, Crumbling Tower of Pizza. I've mentioned in the past that the easiest way to make me love a game's ending is just have every character and every mechanic show up at the very end, and that's exactly what this level does. Every room has a little sprinkle of different mechanics from all the other levels, and as you run through them you find all the other characters in the game and they all join up with you, and by the end of it you got this big ass conga line of fellas all trying to get the hell out of there. I especially love the part where you're just running left for like 5 seconds, it feels amazing. But this level is just the perfect way to end this game. The music's amazing amazing, all the callbacks to the other levels are great, and it's just this frantic escape sequence the whole time. It's earned its spot in P tier. Next we've got Tricky Treat. This is one of the two new levels added in the Halloween update, and it's a pretty unique level even if it is a little short. There's no score, no ranks, no pizza time. Your only goal is to collect all 10 of these pumpkins hidden throughout the level. I really like the puzzle aspect of this level where you have to figure out the best route to take through it so you can find all the pumpkins in a single run, but it did lead to a little bit of awkward trial and error when I was first figuring out the level. Like I'd miss one of the pumpkins or get killed by the pumpkin ghost, meaning I'd have to restart the whole level. And it got a little tedious having to restart every time, but after a couple tries, I had the level down so it wasn't really an issue anymore. But I don't really have much negative to say about this level. It's just quick and simple, it doesn't really introduce anything new, and it's just a nice mini challenge after you collect all those secret pumpkins. So I'm gonna put it in A tier. And that brings us to Secrets of the World, our final level. This is another special level that you get for doing all the secrets in the game. It's a long as hell endurance test where you have to do all 56 secrets back to back, and you only have 25 seconds to do each of them. And this one was a lot of fun. I love how the order of the secrets is completely random, so it's never exactly the same experience each time. And it was a lot of fun trying to remember all the different secrets and keeping track of which ones I had left as I was going through. But it did feel pretty frustrating when you failed, especially if it was near the end when you had just a couple secrets left. You have to restart the entire level, which was a little painful because this is by far the longest level in the game at around 11 minutes. But besides that, this level is great, and it really shows off how varied all the different secrets were in the game. And it was a lot of fun trying to P-rank it, so I'm gonna put it in S tier. And that's every level in Pizza Tower ranked. And this was a lot of fun. I had a great time revisiting this game and taking a closer look at what I liked and disliked about all the different levels. And I hope you enjoyed too. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on my thoughts. Did you agree with most of them or was I way off base with some of my rankings? But that'll be it for me today. Again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.